So, hello, um, I'm Eli, and I am the founder and creative director of the Operating System and Liminal Lab, um, based sort of marginally uh, at some mycelial root system here in Brooklyn in New York City. Um, which is uh, Lenape territory, unceded Lenape territory. Um, I am so, so thrilled to be here um, celebrating the launch of the brilliant Unnatural Bird Migrator by my dear friend and longtime collaborator, Ariel Resnikoff, um, and to have with us this evening, Erica Kaufman and Taryn Williams. Um, what a gift to us all to be here together tonight. Um, so obviously we'll have a couple of readings. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for conversation afterward. Um, I would encourage you to use the chat, um, make comments, etc. We won't necessarily have a formal Q&A, but obviously if you have any comments or any thoughts, please do at least put them in the chat as we're working and, and that will be saved and become part of the archive. The archive is very important for the operating system. Um, and so I think you already know this, but the book is already available um, for purchase, but also as all OS books, it is um, a Creative Commons title. And so it is available already for free download for anyone for whom access would be an issue on the OS open source library uh, for teaching or for community use. So you can find that and I will put all of the links to the book, to the amazing interview that's up with Ari, et cetera, um, when, um, when everyone is in the room. So I don't have to link again and again and again. Um, and so without further ado, um, we're gonna start with Erica tonight, um, whose bio is on my other computer that died while I was talking to you. So give me one second. <laughs> um, no, it's not dead, it just turned off. So, um, I'm so happy to have Erica here. I've known Erica for many years um, and it gives me great joy to see her face here. Uh, so Erica Kaufman is the author of Posed Classic from the wonderful Roof Books and Instant Classic also from Roof and Century Impulse from Factory School. She is the co-editor of No Gender Reflections on the Life and Work of Carrie Edwards from Venn Diagram and of Adrian Rich Teaching at CUNY 1968 to 1974 which was published by the wonderful Lost and Found CUNY Poetics Document Initiative. Um, prose and critical work can be found in The Color of Vowels, New York School Collaborations, The Symposium, Thought Experiments, and Poetical Play in Difficult Times, which we need so badly, approaches to teaching the works of Gertrude Stein and reading, experimental writing, and recent poems can be found in A Perfect Vacuum and PQ. Kaufman is the director director of the Bard College Institute for Writing and Thinking and visiting assistant professor of humanities there at Bard. So I'm gonna give the floor to Erica. Thank you, Erica. And you're welcome to make little applauses or make little noises, turn on for a second <laughs> in the vacuum, speaking of which. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Eli. And, and thank you so much to Ari for this extraordinary book. Um, I thought that I would begin by saying a couple of things about my own um, love for Ariel's work. And um, I found it really hard to even just pick a discrete quote um, to talk about. So I just, I just wanna begin by saying that there's something that when I was first reading A Natural Bird Migrator, there was something that spoke to me inherently like a way that the book communicates across languages and places that feels very familiar and feels like something that I'm always reaching for and thinking about in my own work. So hopefully in what I read, there'll be echoes. So thank you all. This is also my first Zoom reading and it's a fascinating thing and I'm very excited. Um, so I'm just gonna read a tiny bit from post-classic, and then I'll read one new poem. Post-classic account. Oh, the shapes economy makes out of the same old garden sown with bad seeds, empty plot in place of headstone, overgrown water-soaked pebbles. I reach, recount what an arm we had, labor pose, tech toned swallows, keys figurative, sunstroke, chin pierce, jaw shrug. Again, call attention to marks, the act names them, 
pretext for anticipation, my own days etch auto martyr. Here lies a classic survivor, renegade sailor, potential bird metaphor, promise for counting place, the body. So we leave, absolve barstool choreography, Python tablet laps our go cliche. I'm tired of reading about journeys and women mesmerized, soil, food trucks. The body is not a text, not hard, not tempted, deviant, common, flood, binary, photo shoot checklists, can't confect lesbian, look hot dickies, trend to obsessional work boat commodity. You never see the guy tells me somewhere still, there I return, learn to wake up suspended. Finesse, exaggerate, big trucks, hair twin, pack, manic, hebo, globin, whiskey, bitch, textbook, holy, last minute. This body is a cave because it's easier to be abstract than mourning. Post classic. After the descent, I stitched together blood type in favor of showmanship, a cappella multifaceted in our conversion narrative, driven by tablets and injury and various drugs dug up to replace boundless anatomy, aimed to earn rumor shrouded in shipwreck, temptation historically iron more powerful than prophecy and other currency excessive. I become transfused by how enthusiasm wears the weight of detail, how meaningful is defined randomly, a substitute for authentic connection Rather, a bandage, parasitic, lab coat, lap dog, sterile, lyric epistolary, gestational play, de facto rehabilitation clan, stranger, I ask after the defense commercial, after ants gather to assert behavioral vice in flip chart desert process. Let's not boast or bench service plot neuroplasticity equipment commission. I say, Sustain me, enabling matrices, inventive. Most mornings, a tree is just a tree. And then I'm gonna read stuff that's very new, which means that um, it might sound a little bit new, but I figured it would be fun to try it if I can find it. Ah. And this is, is the next book, um, Paraclassic. I sing of arms and of a man, and that's from Virgil's Aeneid. The past begins in song and open arms, gesture of self. Sing to me someone call out to another someone, an effort to affect accountable talk. Pony up ambition test, drift sounds instead. I reach out past commodifications of balcony scenes, acknowledge that in fact, trees are not the lesson, not a behavioral empire of focus groups. And so the sparrow misbehaves in succession, gets messy. So I ask, how do you respond in the moment of buffering, of static, of silent icon, deep fake leaves, common as an invitation? Paraclassic, and this poem begins with a line from one of Ari's poems from Shibboleth, and that's um, how a single prayer springs to language. To begin this year already split between behavioral finance and biblical story, hint of altruism, anxiety in the context of text, to begin beyond a place where people die already when it rains without emphasis, the location of audience inside the light bulb of person, a caterpillar first digests itself and then turns to adult structures, a puzzle to hold boring theory and other feelings like the rush of not jumping simply from train to train. It is here that metamorphosis begins with frustration and empty chairs, a variety show conglomerate of the kind that seeks competence, not talent, broken axioms in place of an eyeball. Here is distance, then faith, then exile appears, a tree metaphor, so listen, please. I'm no longer preoccupied with hijacking the model who sits to argue, shadows active pipelines, gets proximate to my own history, 
the chemistry behind how we become an archaic mouse, a melancholy sailor, a pedestrian mall overwhelmed by garbage, concrete, all small things wield importance purely to create new codes, resilient, vibrant. And I'm just gonna read one last small one. Para classic. Yet another device purchase with intent to support connection, promptly use it to take up squids in isolation, exiled from the house instructional design built of jargon carpet, pipe cleaner outside. No one uses cartwheels to signal experience with landscape. Let me introduce you to exhaustion, a timeline punctuated by distant distancing or minimum viable personas who save uniform buttons. Lately, we become reduced to our avatars, barely used to living upstate in turtle traffic, emoji lawns. What if we all become obscure video game kraken? Remember how it feels to become, to play fetch with oneself, tossing app after app after giant mechanical elephant breaks out of the room where Zoom fails to become clip art evidence of meanwhile, our journey becomes operating table clean, unclear in emphasis, although everybody claps for complete sentences. Feng Shui's this five-year plan out here noticing what a week of resurfacing does to this apparatus through which I invite you to look. Thank you so much and thank you, Ari. Amazing, amazing, Erica. Thank you so much. All right, did you, I feel like you were verbalizing. No, staying mute. <laughs> oh, no, that was fun. Oh, no. Amazing. That was incredible. I'm just blown away, actually, that that book just is it's incredible. I cannot wait to read that. Yeah, I'm really excited for this for this next one. I remember so fondly your, uh, your launch for Post Classic. I can feel us all at Segway just being like, oh. <laughs> Like <laughs> so, so good. Just so, so good. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. All right. So um, thank you, everyone. And thanks for everyone who um, came in while Erica was reading. I'm going to still, you know, be admitting people. So just a couple of things to repeat, just kind of administrative things. Um, this uh, reading is being recorded. So um, you are by... <laughs> <laughs> by nature of being here on the record. Um, so if you have your camera on, you are part of the recording and you give us permission to record you, um, you are welcome to turn your camera off. So we do love having you here. And we, as as the host and as the readers, we really much, uh, it, it's important to us to kind of see you here in the room with us. It's very valuable to us, but um, ab absolutely whatever feels comfortable. Um, so now we're gonna have Tyrone and I'm just gonna read a brief bio. Uh, Tyrone Williams teaches literature and theory at Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the author of several chapbooks and six books of poetry, CC on Krupskaya, On Spec from Omnidon, The Hero Project of the Century from the Backwaters Press, Adventures of Pi from Dos Madres, Howell from Atelos, and As Is from Omnidon. A limited ed edition art project, Trump Loy, was published by Hostel Books in 2017. He and Jean Hoiving edited an anthology of critical essays, Inciting Poetics, uh, from the University of New Mexico Press, and that came out last year. Uh, and his new website, which you can't see, is at flummoxpoet.com, which I can share with you and is in our event page as well. We are so, so happy and so psyched to have Tyrone here tonight, and he's going to do a great reading for us. Thank you, Tyrone. Thanks, and I. Um, <clears throat> really happy to be here with Ariel and Erica, and also to see so many familiar faces. Uh, I'll resist the urge to just talk to people. I, that's what I sort of really want to do is catch up over this last year. Um, I think I'm Sorry, my cat wants to get out of the room. Okay. She's gone. <laughs> um, so as you probably know, we were asked to pick a phrase from um, Ariel's book. And um, 
it won't surprise anyone that this is a phrase that stuck out to me in his work. And so this is a direct quote from the work. My compositional method traverses by mistranslation into Yiddish, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arcadian English adapted sonic semantic properties and grammar syntax and lexicon, taking English as its temporary host while performing perpetual inflectional slippages, interlingual punning and fusion slangs as much as the host can absorb. I love that. Uh, this comes fairly early in the book, but I think it's an accurate description of what's actually going on in the book too. And so um, I thought, um, well, I'll just read what I, what I wrote about that phrase. This is not in the blurry, but this is what I wrote about that particular sentence. <clears throat> I take this method as definitive of almost every non-WAS poetry practice, perhaps every speech utterance in the United States. The tension between the ongoing, often desperate standardization of speaking and writing and actual utterance and writing practice is where I find the sweet spot of linguistic pleasure. So I think I'm just going to read from um, as is because uh, when I read the um, Ariel's book, it really resonated with some things I've been thinking about um, recently and some of those things show up in this book. So just a few points from the book. This sister myth of occluded being, acute disaster, grave catastrophe, stand on in for the dead letter run aground is a sundial raised to clock, a darkish hue, gold, emerald, bronze, silver, lead, topaz, tin, of crushed blue, lips kissed by crux as, and atop the toppled at rest at the feet of heart and feather. Library scientists, this is after Chassette, who is sometimes referred to as uh, Thoth's companion. She who scrivens after nine, the garden, flood, washed out lines, crops, etc. reboots one, deletes none, spell 10, see Book of the Dead, opens the door to heaven, the mistress of the house of books, and site manager of hotel, motel, social media, files, scrolls, catalog spells, reserves heads, Disarticulated sky and over left over abbreviations spoken for by Ka, aka Ba, fairy godmother, grandfathers, the wishes of the dead, sprinkles fairy dust to dust, tombstone, tomb, shaft, burial, chamber, music somatics. Sans semantics. The lady of the house, not withstood, weighs each soul, light as a wafer, heavy as a book, on her tongue before another bloodbath washes it down, where the elements dissolve in acids only she can stomach. So I'm just going to read um, two more. Um, there are three poems in this book um, whose second word title is archive. The first is um, the Bully Archive, which is um, inspired by work by um, Samir Farouk an artist based in Toronto, <clears throat> but I'm just going to read um, 
the speculative archive. The carbon 12 footprint of a single fingernail splits decision, decide to decide or not. Decay, stability and life, the isotope of being or pedestrian compound, but for a pronounced limp. Tilt once the river freezes over. Name expropriates every other proper brand. Objects introjected and flipped, catapulted against the subject, fortified however buttered by the missing pieces of an alleged puzzle. Ram face, entry into exit from the maze of min minotaur lies. 14 equals 12 plus 13, 14 equals 25, etc. Base obfuscations, not unlike the flag taxonomies of Linnaeus in gray, against which, <clears throat> against which a splitter, Raffinas, late of the Ottoman Empire, Italy and France, a refugee lo loyal only to the great laws, symmetry, perpetuation, diversity, instability, divines the principle of deviation no nomenclature can arrest, its pursuit of sheer proliferation. No eye can comprehend in its headlong hurry to see itself before and after the interloping intercessors, mirror, ocean, woman, etc. Or say nothing of light, air, Raffinesque arrives at the sound, shipwreck, half drowned, destitute, abandoned, quote, the deceit of women. And then a savior, John Clifford, raises him like a prodigal adopted son, a professorship, respect, however begrudging of his peers, a man among men, kin exchange for kith, as he names begotten generations of reproductions, index, gain, and loss, algebra for numbers, the reductive legacy of a Renaissance man born centuries too late. And so a naturalist, fit for keeping the books of nature, accounting for what passes for not unlike the African in the fit of birth pangs, the Negro wailing and gurgling as she emerges from her cis womb a washed and amniotic loss. So one more <clears throat> before we get to the main act. This is Ahalaya, which translates roughly to sort of the dark ages from the point of view of Islam. Blue, green, gray, Water footprints in profile point in one direction. Imprint right east, hill astride away. Tamp down point step over non-point, left handedness. Basin groundwaters, the lake of books burns forever. Thought, intelligence, knowledge, wisdom, logic, reason, measure, writing, magic, secrets, Ibis, Ibis, sorry, <clears throat> Ibis and baboon headed, George and court stenographer, stenographer, weigh and record the souls on and in file. Petroglyphs of underground petroleum deposits. Placemakers make way for the wayfarers of the desert. Sail across the sands, all thanks to Ra. Steady at their backs, billowing chests, pull out their mobiles, click on trees, the anime of life, save as oars. Thanks. You can hear my actual applause. I'll applause for everybody. Thank you so much, Tyrone, how amazing. Thank you, so gorgeous. Um, so, um, I think that everybody is the main event, honestly. We're we're a non we're an anti hierarchical organization, so um, we're all here <laughs> being the main event together. 
Um, but uh, I am really excited to um, introduce Ari. And I'm gonna actually, before I do that, I'm gonna say a little something, but let me, let me do the official. I'll do the bio. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and um, read Ari's bio straight from this book. So Ariel Reznikov, as you may know, is a poet, scholar, translator, editor, and educator. With Stephen Ross, he is at work on the first critical bilingual edition of Michael Licht's Modernist Yiddish Long Poem Processions. And with Lilith Lachman and Gabriel Levin, he is translating into English the collected writings of the translingual Hebrew poet Avot Yosharon. He has taught courses on multilingual diasporic literatures at the Center for Programs in Contemporary Writing at UPenn and at Bina, the Jewish Movement for Social Change. In 2019, he completed his PhD in Comparative Literature and Literary Theory at UPenn, and he is currently a Fulbright postdoctoral US scholar. Ari lives with his partner, the artist and designer Riv Weinstock, and their toddler, Zamir Shalom, in Alameda, California, on unceded Ohlone territory. They will soon be departing for a two year stay in the Judean mountains, Jabil Al Khalil. And um, credit to that partner, Riv Weinstock, who um, did an incredible job using the OS open source design protocol. And so actually was the main designer of this book. Um, and it was an amazing process to all work on this together. Um, and so I just wanna give Riv credit for that. So a little applause for Riv. Um, and so before we start, I, I wanted, which I think is maybe a better introduction than the bio. Um, in the back of every OS book, there's always been a interview with the poet uh, or the author, the artist, whoever it is that we're working with. And um, I find these to be really important um, process interviews and something that gives you a little bit of a look behind the fourth wall. And so in, in by way of introducing Ari, I actually want to read a little bit of one of Ari's answers to one of the questions, which is, what is a poet or writer or artist anyway? Um, and so he wrote a quote actually from Avot Yosharan, perhaps not every person is a prophet, but every person is a poet because poetry obliges that a person responds to everything. And Ari writes, this is one way of talking in about my poetics and sense of poetic denizenship on one foot. Ultimately being a poet and translator is for me about a human responsibility to biological and cosmological life and the critical human ability to respond to that life and to whatever the ongoing catastrophe of that life demands. Perhaps it is also as Isaac Bashevis Singer suggested in his Nobel Prize speech about preparing oneself and one's world for an afterlife yet to come that is about preparing in this world for a better world beyond which we must nevertheless find ways to imagine and build toward in the here and the now. And I, there's so much in that that I could keep reading, but I wanted to kind of offer that as the introduction of like Ari's heart and work, as opposed to just, you know, what we code switch on paper for our bios. So with that, I will introduce Ari Reznikov. Thank you so, so, so much, Eli. Um, thank you for organizing this. Uh, thank you for, um, publishing this book, for believing in this book. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. Volume up, John. Um, Maybe a little louder, Ari, just yeah, a little. I'll talk a little, I'm gonna go loud with the poems anyway. So um, um, Eli, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can never thank you enough and will continue to thank you uh, forever. Um, this whole process of publishing this book working with my amazing partner, Riv Weinstock, uh, on designing it is, and I recommend it to everyone, just a dream for any writer uh, to work side by side with the designer on the book. Um, we had, you know, only a few sets of proofs to really go through because uh, we were sitting in our work from home architecture office and uh, just making the book ourselves. So um, an enormous, enormous thank you to Eli and to Riv um, who's sitting right here, but it's off screen at the moment. Um, yeah, and some more uh, people. What's that? Oh, I, um, uh, I also just want to thank uh, Erica and Tyrone uh, so, so much. Those were incredible readings. Um, 
you you know to figure out who to read with is like a is is a big question and like how the poetics sort of rift together. But I can say definitively about both uh, Eric and Tyrone, and also about like probably like you know 40, 50 people here that. Um, you know, the way that I write is that I hang out with other writers uh, or I go to readings and listen to other writers and then I go home and basically respond. Um, and the best sort of writing, the best sort of art just makes you want to make your own stuff. And this book, uh, A Natural Bird Migrator, I remember like particular um, instances, uh, one instance of hearing Tyrone read at Writer's House and going home and like, just working on this for hours. And so like he's in here and Erica, we would like hang out and talk whether it was at writer's house or whether it was in Israel, Palestine. And we would, I would go home and write. And, um, you know, poems are really for me like letters, you know, and um, every poem in this book, whether it's um, explicitly dedicated to someone or not is like, is a letter to someone, usually someone in particular that I was thinking about or responding to. So uh, with that, I'll just say finally, thank you to all of you for being here. This is not the way that I imagined this launch to be, but this is um, beyond anything I could have imagined. And this is just so beautiful and extremely um, powerful and, and I'm, ex I'm so grateful. So without further ado, I'm gonna read from the book, um, which uh, is out for sale. I can't get the whole thing on screen. The cover is a, a silk screen and acrylic by the Hebrew, deeply leftist Hebrew painter, Michal Skan Cohen. Um, and the book is dedicated uh, to Rifkala Fagala, my grandmother who turns 100 uh, next week, and uh, Zamir Shulam Ernest, uh, my son. And it's in memory of Michal Skan Cohen, the painter who died um, of cancer just about 20 years ago. Um, the epigraph, uh, there are two epigraphs to the book. So I'll start with those. And here I recall in the migration of the storks in their eastward season, and we, the children, used to shout at them, Buchania, Buchania, Pali Signiazde. That's Polish. The stork, the stork, the nest goes up in flames. The second epigraph is, God, the cage has turned into a bird and it has flown, Alejandra Pizarnik. Lick and spit, <coughs> membrane chant, membrane tied up. My membrane is bent nerve. The enchanter God sent me in front of Samos. I have drawn your picture. I have traced your figure. Having observed your strength, I have crafted your appearance. Espied the shape of your membrane. I have down, down the, the, the. your features, have bound your membrane and bent your nerves. I have done to you the spell you did to me. Having let you under the evil eye against Lech und Spy, I have let you suffer my revenge, my sorcery, tricks, evil, maleficent plottings, evil messages, hates, injustices, murder, my paralysis of mouth. May your head stop with the water of my membrane and the cleansing water of my hands, may it be spoken. Inglossia, friendly face. Friendly face, a familiar face, like a hot bath, like a bowl of chopped meat. Stop banging on my head, literally bargaining with my sanity. The gargling solution should be fresh breath. Oh, that it should come true. Who bringeth forth bread from the earth, etc. 
for the who bring it forth, excuse me, who bring it forth bread from the earth, etc., to the common people for a bargain, say, not only to do business, but for heartache. See, sweetheart singing, my heart's love is a pit in the earth. Listen, you can shake, stammer, an impending fire from stuffed cabbage to stuffed cabbage to stuffed holubshis, holushkis, holubshi, depending on from where. And so I made a mistake. So the words abraid. So what? I've been called worse than debouchet many times before. A cane razor, carouser, madman, mongrel, kike. Inglasia, common sense for Ted Greenwald. What a, what kind of a, what's it matter to you, huh? No, now don't get excited, literally burst into flame. It stinks. What are you talking? Smack, smack, gently said. Would you keep quiet? Shouted, quiet, I said, shut up. There's the professional, professorial type who makes a living from it gathering the pious sheep, berating the irreligious who flout the sacred law. Beautiful as the seven worlds, Bell let and with a hearty laugh, literally half sarcastically. The wig at the wedding she wore ever after, a watchword greeting beetle at the stiebel quoting old policeman slang. It had been a brothel whorehouse before mix of wool and linen. Now you ought to be ashamed of yourself, literally, to the bottom of your throat. The prettier ones they bury, literally, this one is an ugly one. And gather pleasure, the little nothings for a messenger, drunkard, non-Jewish, literally impious or wild one. If to skin one, a hag, mere worthless one, literally mischievous child or apoplectic wreck where the customer is king, Americanism, a snake can also be a shrew, clumsy, bungler, drag, poor, luckless, sponger, butter-fingered, schmuck. Inglasia, parvenu. So now get rid of it, alas, for a lack, woe unto whom, either too much or too little literally a wallop or a toot. Dear me, imitatingly, parvenu. Cut it short, literally, without introduction. Conceited and peevish, sulky and stuffed in a puffy shirt, tired out and sputtered as confused, little pups, literally, overly made up. The rich are too stuffed up to photograph, literally stuffed in dead birds and drunk, me, bothersome, hanger on, cursing in disorderly survival. Inglasia, behind the scola for Pierre Joris. Quick, quickly, the beggar watchman Elijah cuts young men's pious at an all time low. Now cut it short. Have you finished the dirty work? Pins and needles in his toe, a spanking new proverb preaching another wretched thing. Just think how it reflects on the religious democracy. The very rich, literally stone rich, strong and brave, shitting sorrel grass soup, peace pits in a leafy green stew, Yiddishism idiomatic for those inclined to heretics. One who becomes dumb like a piece of wood literally loses speech. Tell the children's children, some fool. A bit of peace tricks the smaller bits toward quiet death. Prideful sweet cakes in skin thin dough rolled up in blue cheese and rotted beef. With push shove vulgarism, Vildechaya, literally wild beast. Behind the scola in a snored aside, a bent new year, it's gone. It doesn't matter, the sour cream's always all ready and sour, finally pronounced, phew, listen, hold on, how's this?
Inglasia, acute pain for Jerome Rothenberg. Acute pain usually appearing as oi ves mir, literally woe is me, the stuff and nonsense air, so you say literally no from what. In crawling, ache, slang, literally wandering Jew and never stop to itch. But whom are you kidding? Literally, what's the joke? And whom are you fooling? Literally, who are you fucking over this time? When I eat my anti-Semites, I'll chew them out myself. They're Jews like me. I'm hell on earth to them, gaping as a pit, literally, where the devil sits to say his morning prayers. Get killed, they recite in communal prayer. Drop dead, get lost, go choke on yourself. Who knows, who could have believed to be ruined as such, literally inflected? How's business? How's tricks? What's your name, huh? What's your mother's name? How come, how much a wild one? You want, what else? What's it matter to me, huh? What are you talking my head off? Watch out, literally, to throw one's eye. What a sober carries on his lung, a drunk struts, but what's the difference capable of literally what's on his tongue and all in the cards, but what's the trick? Literally, what's cooking a wound of bologna, literally fried sausage cheese noodle, or Vieso, Slavic, literally fool named for Haman's youngest son. The Jews voos, literally boo the divic tongue away and when sleeping, later cut it out. Photographs of the tongue are posted on the study hall's walls to mark the day. So that's the first section of the book. Um, I'm now gonna move, I mean, that's just a, some poems from the first section of the book, I could say. I'm gonna move now into an, another section which is called From Shibboleth. And the epigraph to this section reads, whose every page is an abyss where the wing shines with the name. And that's Edmond Jabez. And um, I'm going to read from this suite in this section called Third Space for Rivka Sarah Hagar. August 17th, 2017. And, and I should say, these are poems that were written on the border uh, of Israel, Palestine, Lebanon. Um, and they were written during uh, two uh, deep architectural traverses that I did with Riv Weinstock um, as a part of a larger installation uh, and, and architectural work that she was working on. Uh, I was in charge of craft service. I like to say I was the driver and in charge of food. But while Rivka was doing uh, her work uh, with camera and uh, sketch pad and other things, I was writing these poems. So you'll hear um, throughout these, the couple of poems I'm gonna read from here, you'll hear these kind of tags. Um, for example, this one starts 12G. And what these tags are, are actually um, geographic markers that we would find spray painted on the border by land, uh, land surveyors. And I remember, I don't know if Jason Mitchell is here, but Reading this at Snocky, uh, reading this at Frank O'Hara's Last Lover, not at Snocky's, but at the uh, at the diner, and uh, actually talking about this, I was reading with Gene Day and talking about this, and Jason knew exactly what this was. I mean, he could actually, you know, and so my hope was in writing these tags in that you could actually a land surveyor might actually be able to geolocate certain lines in this poem, and that was exactly where I wrote the line. So August seventeenth. 2017, 12G, springtime at the Lul smells so bad, it sounds saws and cars pass with men talking over clucking hens. Blue bags not here nor toward me. Such a place makes me question the ethics of eggs. Afternoon heat with no sweat to cool us, Cement mixer mechanisms idle beside the coop. 11A, overt questions of eggs after urn heat turns silo steel ridges, 
silver tipped the blue road with no shoulder, arm with no skin. So that's the border. Narrow shoulders from Muscovy finally to see a panorama. Ambulance sirens you can hear across borders you can hear. Transmission, migrations, solutions, exclusion, and fenced stone margins of rosemary at Beaufort Castle. I can see it from the hill below. Cameras watching at a crossing. UN peacekeeping vehicles control. White vans drive to and fro between yellow flags. From drafting landscapes in dust, what it must look like to look up, to see a face in the clouds, ashen and mad. Blue sky, white pages in landscape of cameras, a shooting at the border, haze I barely see through. Bunker life underground becomes the skeleton structure on the border chain. Hazy suns on a frontier to no man's land. Spin reckless border towns in silhouettes dark for dark lights, white disguise. How are the apples in the ditches? Back at home, they've been burning things all day. All I can see is the smoke, flags slapping the wind, the blast of a ram's horn. What do you sound for in burning? Soldier patrols on the border, lights grow distant dusk over Lebanon. What's across the fence echoing? Third space, February 15th, 2018, K8. Cawing and crawling on all sides, we awake to the birds in the trees beneath us. This is the place behind the mountain. This is the place soft in ink. Garden of okra and plywood. Garden of graves and silver fish. Garden of the names of disappeared and now invisible Mr. The border is a tractor in the mud. The border is a grammar built on power. The food we enjoyed grows rotten in the mouths of the border guards. Sharpen your eyes after to see where the border leads, nowhere. Houses carved in caves on dead Phoenician names paid in blood and snails, thin is the way the word fails. From the panhandling border of invisibility, not in purgatory, but reality. Morning stories grown into narrative grass and fruit small animals feed on the remains. Pastures still full of remains, though no one remains, have gone down to the valley of screams, rasping, and grasping and gasping, she rattles. No escape but through the fence. I'm going to move into a different uh, section. Uh, this will be the last section, last three poems. Um, and uh, this is a section called Day Books. And these are poems uh, that are quite literally love letters uh, to my friends. Um, and so uh, they're all dedicated uh, to people, all, all to poets and artists. Um, but uh, in the book, it's just first names because in fact, these are my dearest people. Um, uh, so this one is for Jake uh, and it's called Lev Das. Moses coincides with the people only 40 years after, happy birthday, people. We have attained the eyes to see, the ears to hear, supposedly. But what does it mean, lev das? The specter encoded prepositions 
as polysemic as a credit card's taxes or IDs. It's symptomatic of mountain water peaks, the chicken farmers buying out the fan companies. For human hair uses horse stiletto ashen porches, uses Polish cinema employees at a Warsaw Samsung factory, makes all the colors for all the kids, buys books, lifts bellies over rivers of plants. Machination stands entities against anarchic waste, stands identities and against hardy software and I solemnly swear vocabulary cards. Justice, Freiburg, dein Schwein, Sonnensnout, dein Swan, remembering its former glory. From an Alfred Eisenstadt century, she reads, this time around, no tubing in the tub down the Danube, to which position is Gigangian to the province of the self. And the belt of American media corporations is the accordion of an ugly polka. Companies forgetting their functions forget their names. Ist the diagnostic un adjusting it. The just dude in such circumstances must approach the Sprach error or will error Sprach such yiches will error schreiben nor on schreiben error the names now erased. For Erica. Sukis. Plastic sizzles, candle wrappers, support wrapper plastics for more sports, eggs, forks, more livers, morgues, live dialysis units, manure corkages and decorkages, jordily exhumed, exuberance exempted, and corkages swelled to quelling quits while failing at quietly BBQing the latest mince. The fourth fortune skin century dissection cuts from the first born shows dynamic litter formally speech acts shows dynamic speaking from racist spokespersons. Hate addicts, not dynamics attack the anonymous beer factories. Shoshana citron margarita burns incense potpourri smells Burnt, smoky lemons, smells mint, warped lemons, west, past Fresno. Are citron myths my family? We are disoriented, finally. This will be my last poem of the evening. Thank you again. Thank you so, so, so much for being here. Uh, and uh, this poem is called Condestruction, Condestruction. In whatever shape or form it takes, what breaks drills, the body wakes into a land not promised you. On archipelagos of sound, a silence reigns, maimed and claimed as one of those who knew you well. Whomever sounds, the sound resounds and sorts the mounds and bodies left for dead when the sun sets over a different place. The place is not the place, but the face, she says. Moment to moment, mouth to mouth, in the cave of the shark, in the body of a bird. I'm in bed by 10 a.m. with my earplugs in, and still the drilling persists. Neurotic mists conjure valleys of erotic shit, valleys of the wretched myth of persistence. Subsistence consists of existing conditions, a fist in the shape of a rose. In the valley of resurrection, morning recovers strangled birds on all sides by blinding light we can't see. It is the light before dark. It is the darkness probed in light. If I am the sight, give me sight to hold and behold the cold, not the cold, our hunger, not our hunger. 
with poems between our teeth, feasting on the least and starving on the bones. In the beginning, we cut stone. In the beginning, we roamed and combed ticks from our sheep. Sights and excursions excavate our lines, find and do not find. In mine and not in mine, the yellow berries that carried me through sleep. Corrupting my, distracting by the wheat of the weak and saying we are those who have gone crazy. Mark yourself in ash above the temple. Sort what cannot be sorted, the mortuaries, mountains below, above the summer snow. To know, no, never to know, to go after what cannot be. Thank you. If everyone would actually just like turn on your audio and make a little sound, Thanks. that would be really lovely. Thank you so, so much. Um, so we have come to our close, though I would love to just invite, you know, especially Ari and Erica and Tyrone, if you have any thoughts in closing, I would love to sort of hear any sort of responses to each other's reading tonight, or if you just wanted to kind of say anything. Riv, if you want to say anything, obviously, um, but we, we we're probably going to do, I think, another little event that has to do with like design, because that's happening a lot of BOS right now. Um, but anyone thoughts, you're welcome to jump in. I mean, Peanut Gallery, you're, you're welcome to jump in too. We love you. I just said a lot, but I'll just say that <clears throat> the feeling that I was mentioning before of wanting to write when I hear other poets who I really admire is the same right now. I mean, um, as I listened to Erica and then Tyrone, I thought to myself, where's my, <laughs> where's my notepad, you know? And um, I have, uh, you know, epigraphs for two new poems from those poems that you read. So it is this kind of amazing um, chain of witness, actually, is how I often think about this work is that, you know, we witness each other and continue that witnessing. So that's all I'll say. I have the pen and the notebook always at the ready here. Do the same, Ari. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This was so uh, beautiful. Thank you all so much. Oh my goodness, there's Ray, La Rachel Landis is there in the house. My goodness. Thank you, Ray. Say hi. <laughs> hi, guys. Um, I'll also just say I'm that. lost for words. <laughs> Unlike you. <laughs> the one thing I'll also say, just in case it like seemed awkward or if anyone is writing to me while I was reading or reacting, I actually chose to put something up like completely different on the screen because I thought that I might be hard for me to keep focus. So um, I was just looking at the poems and sort of reading to you. Uh, but I had Rifka here sort of reacting, trying to figure out ways to read in such a way that you can sort of uh, feel the reactions. But then as soon as I moved that thing away from the screen, then suddenly it was like this. It was like, you know, the cloud moved away from the sun. And so, just so lovely. Uh, if you, I mean, if you guys scroll back up, I guess, or I can put them back in the chat. I did sort of add before the link for Ari's wonderful interview and in the link to the interview, obviously, is also sort of the link to buy the book. And I also put the link to the um, to the open source library, which Ari's book is right on the top of right now. And you can link over to purchase and you can also link over to download. I mean, if everyone's following what's happening right now in sort of the 
you know, poetry community, like it's important to know that if you download something from the operating system and you give us $10, we still get way more than if you buy it somewhere else. So it's better for you and better for us. So if you're teaching and you're, you know, and if it's okay for you to have a digital copy, like that's not actually worse for us, right? Like if you, we love books, I have 10 million, right? But we're, you know, we're in a new time. We don't know what's necessarily going to happen to our a capacity to have books to be in a speculative future like so you know do what's right for you it, it, it isn't hurting anybody that's not how we understand this process here um i did also put up in the chat the sort of design protocol that Ari and Riv use. That's something that we're using with everybody at the OS, but I didn't just design it for us. I designed it for open source use. So these are questions for writers and poets and people who don't necessarily think about the book as an object, um, you know, really helping you as a writer think about the physicality and proprioceptic relationship to the page as something that changes the work between the time in which you create it as a piece of text, which really is a not a book yet, but is just a piece of text. The work of making it into a book is actually quite a different thing, which usually we hand to other people. And so, you know, that's something that we, what I think has been really important in the making of this book and is really important in the making of OS books. So we invite you to do that. It's obviously it's on the OS website. It's free. So, you know, engage, come play. It's there for you. It's open for a reason. Um, yeah, so we're so happy to see you all here tonight. Thank you. Final words from everybody, anybody? There they go, look at them. Very easy to leave out the back of the poetry reading in Zoom. It's like the perfect Irish exit. <laughs> I just, um, I wait for the time that we can all uh, be together again. I mean, we're together like this and this is extraordinary. And in fact, as Eli was saying at the beginning, we actually, even if we could be together, this particular group couldn't be together because we're in so many different places. So there is something very special there. Um, and at the same time, I just miss you all so much and miss hugging and kissing you and piling into small spaces with you. And there, <laughs> there will come a time and um, I'm, wa I'm waiting for that time all the time. Um, yeah. Shall we say goodbyes and thank you, Ariel. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank Carpenter. you, Ari. And Eric. I look forward to reading with you on the twelfth. Yeah. See you then. Yeah. And uh, Adina Karasik and I will be reading for the at Concordia at Concordia University Center <laughs> for Expanded Poetics on the twelfth with a conversation uh, moderated by Charles Bernstein. So. Uh, I'll same email that you may have seen the notice for this. Uh, I'll send another email with all the info for that, and maybe there'll be something on yeah. Facebook. Too. Uh, and so. for anyone interested in another translingual reading, on the 24th of January, we'll be celebrating a couple of other new OS books, and including Angel Dominguez's Rose Sun Water, the recent um, translation of um, Jose Vincente Anaya's long poem, um, Hikuri Payoti. Hey, by uh, and then we'll be joined by uh, Maria Vasquez Valdez from um, Mexico, whose book um, Kaose was uh, translated by Margaret Randall, who's also be joining us, um, and also um, Eric Sayans from Susura Sami Padre. So lots of great uh, translingual English Spanish work coming up next month with a really great reading then too. So come yeah, on, big, back. big big ups to, and pitch for for Angel for that whole, like everything you said. I just wanted to mention that Angel is probably my oldest uh, friend in, uh, say in contemporary poetry. Angel and I were on the, in the same hall at Porter College at UC Santa Cruz. And uh, we're both hanging out and spending time before either of us, actually, I think they were thinking of themselves as a poet, uh, but I was not, I was thinking of myself as a listener. So um, <laughs> that book is amazing and I really recommend everybody getting a copy, uh, as are the other books you mentioned. And yeah, again, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All righty, my dear. Thank you all. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, everybody, for being here. Happy holds. Stay safe. Uh, yes, stay safe, Paul. More thanks. Soon. Lots of love.
This was magnificent. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sure.